This series has been really, really good. If you've been with uh, us for the past five, six, whatever weeks, um, I, I went back and re-listened to them all, and, and I, was, I was taking notes, and I'm like, man, I'm just going to replay. I'm going to re- replay a highlight reel of Pastor Dean just because it's been so good. But uh, I just want to pray over the offering. We'll pray over the message, and we'll jump into it. Father God, we just thank you so much. We thank you for your word. Uh, Father, that you have given us clear instruction, uh, that we do not have to be confused uh, about your will for our finances, for our success. Father, you've made it abundantly clear uh, that you de- desire for us to prosper. You made a way for us to prosper, uh, and we just thank you for that. Father, we thank you for watching over your word, uh, that you do the work. Father, you bring the increase. We simply obey. We simply sow. We simply tithe uh, and give offerings, Father, and you do the rest, and we thank you for that. And Father, we lift up the message tonight, Father. I don't know anything. I can do nothing, uh, but with your help, Father, we can, uh, we can progress. We can move forward in life. We can get better. We can have more success. And it's only by your help. It's only by your grace. So we just ask, Father, uh, that we would have eyes that see and ears that hear and hearts that understand tonight, Father, uh, that you would make it clear to us, that you would shine a light on these, these uh, principles, on this revelation, Father, that you would bring it to life on the inside of us. Help it to become real to us. Help us to see tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Pastor mentioned uh, way back, it was actually the first message in the series that that he believed that this uh, series was for people who are ready to go up a notch. I'm, I'm the kind of guy who likes to go up a notch. Anybody with me? I, I like to go up a notch. And then uh, this, just this past week, he said, uh, he touched on something similar, but he said, uh, he was talking about people that say, I want to learn stuff that's deeper. And he said, but until you can do the very basics, then why in the world would you expect to even understand the things that might be deeper from a biblical perspective. You're not going to. You're never going to know any more than what you've done, meaning the word that you've already done. We've got to do what we already know to do. And I believe that God has given me some instruction for us tonight. I believe it's going to help us. Uh, It's not like the crowd pleaser prosperity message, you know, but I, I believe that it is a crowd pleaser in the sense that it will bring victory to our life. It will bring success to our life. So um, a few different things, uh, just as I recap from what he said, in order to grow, we must continue to grow. Is anybody in here ready to continue to grow? I, I mean, if Pastor Dean, after 40 years, can say, I've got a lot of growing to do, I think it's safe to say all of us have a lot of growing to do. So I'm just so grateful for them. I'm so grateful for the Word. The Word has all the answers, anything that we could ever need. And so uh, we cannot do life ahead of time. Pastor Dean has preached that for so many years. Life takes time. That's typically the last thing that I want to hear. I don't want to hear that life takes time because I want it right now. Amen? We live in a right now society. You can pretty much, I mean, Amazon, when you click the button, there's a drone like headed towards your house to drop the package. It's amazing. I mean, Heather's like, if we order in the next 22 minutes, I can have it here tomorrow. I'm like, how do they do that? Like who's sitting in the van revving, revving the pedal, like throw it in. Come on, let's go. We got to go to Hobbs, New Mexico. I mean, how do they get to the desert (laughs) that quick? I don't know, but that's the society that we live in. That's the day and age that we live in. But pastor has been so good. Life does take time. Sometimes, most of the time, we want it right now. But life takes time. And he said, you have to live where you are right now. You can't live ahead of time. You've got to do life where you are. And I believe that if we're honest with ourselves, if we really evaluate where am I right now, if we're honest with ourselves, I believe God wants to show us that next step that leads towards where we want to be right now. And in a matter of time, in a short matter of time, we'll find ourselves where we've been wanting to be for a long time. But it's only when we humble ourselves and we say, God, I'm, I give up, <laughs> you know, mercy. I had a big brother and, and he would just, you know, he would pin me down and he would just, you know, just pound on my sternum and pound on my sternum until I would say I give up. And, you know, as a little brother, I never wanted to give up, even though I eventually did give up. Sometimes we've got to come to an end of ourselves. And we've got to say, God, I, I give up. Why? Because we can't do this 
on our own. There is literally no way to be successful without God. There's just no way. And so I believe if we'll just humble ourselves tonight, if we'll just open ourselves up uh, to these scriptural truths, I really believe it will be life-changing for all of us. Uh, it's already blessed me. It's kind of like, um, you know, if, if someone's cooking in the kitchen, you know, and you come home and, you know, your anticipation is building or you pass through the kitchen, it's like this, this expectation for greatness and excitement. Uh, really, that's, that's what was birthed in me as I, I studied humility, honor. That's what Pastor Dean has been talking about. And I just believe if you'll just open your heart to these scriptures tonight, I believe it'll bless you too. So we've been building, uh, Laura, if you put up the first slide, we're just talking about honor, uh, specifically humility and honor is what Pastor Dean has been talking about for the past few weeks. And honor, I believe, is the goal. We've, we've uh, heard the verse throughout the series um, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. I'm just going to quote it. He says, them that honor me, I will honor and they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. So, so we're building towards honor. And let me read one more verse of scripture to you. It's found in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 33. It says, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And then it goes on to say, but before honor, before we can get to what we're building, before we can get to our goal, before honor is humility. And so the next slide, our, our art department has prepared uh, you know, humility is, is the foundation for honor. So, so meaning like, and I think there's a business here in town and they're having some challenges with their foundation. And so they've literally kicked all the businesses out and they put up a fence and they said, we're going to fix this foundational issue. You can't just ignore it. One of, one of, um, our, someone we know who worked there said like the walls were cracking. I mean, the back wall was sinking in. If, if your foundation's not right, it's not going to be good. We know that. So, so if our humility is not right, our honor is never going to work. It's not going to be good. So, so we know that before we can ever get to honor, we've got to talk about humility. Now, before, um, you know, and, and the thing is, we can't, just, we can't just know about humility and we can't just understand how it works. We really have to implement it in our life. <laughs> That's the, the challenge. We can look at the scripture and we can see, oh, that's what humility looks like. That's cool. <laughs> you know, that's, that's neat. But it's when we begin to implement humility in our life, that's when we really see God's power begin to work. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Jot it down if you're taking notes. Jesus said this. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. He said, for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest for your souls. Rest for your souls. That sounds good to me. Does that sound good to anybody else? But he said, first of all, he said, I'm meek, meaning, meaning uh, he's gentle, but he's, he's humble. But he also said, learn of me, meaning don't just do what I say to do. Watch me be meek. Watch me be humble. Watch me be gentle. Now, now Jesus was powerful. He wasn't this mousy little wimpy. That wasn't Jesus. But yet we can be humble. We can be meek. And, and still be powerful at the same time. And I love that uh, pastor said it. Um, I don't have my laptop here, but pastor said it. You know, Jesus showed up being who he was, did what he had to do. And then he let the ultimate scorekeeper worry about the honor. Remember when, when Jesus, uh, when people would try to give him accolades, he would say, uh, these, th this is, these are my father's words. You know, he didn't say like, yeah. I stayed up all night and wrote this sermon. You know, you know he, he I burned the midnight oil, paid the price. Others were playing. I was praying. You know, he, he, he wasn't that way. You know what I'm saying? He said, oh, that's my father you're thinking of. If you've seen me, you've actually seen my father. And see, that's the way God wants us to be. When, when people see us in public, this isn't about us having a good time in church, even though church is a big part of what we do. Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. But what if our life got so good that it literally began to impact other people. I believe that's what God wants for us. So Jesus says, hey, check it out. I'm humble, learn of me. Pastor um, has said on multiple occasions throughout the series, God's not gonna humble us. That's something that we choose to do. This is our decision. I'm gonna choose to humble myself. I have some help for us to humble ourselves, <laughs> some scriptural support. Um, I've walked in humility, uh, a little bit of my life. I've walked in plenty of pride. I have tons of bad experience and pride and how it, it doesn't work out and doesn't end well. Uh, but, but ultimately we're going to look at the scripture and we're going to get uh, our doctrine, our, our belief system. 
We're going to systematically, line upon line, precept upon precept, we're going to build our belief system about what we believe about this. So, again, if pastors got room to grow at 40 years in, we've all got room to grow. He talked about this being continuous, and he also warned us about becoming familiar with the word. See, becoming, oh yeah, I know that verse, what else you got? Right? Sometimes we get that way, like, I need a new verse. <laughs> I need a new verse on, on prosperity. I need a new verse on healing. No, we, we, we need to esteem the verses we already have. We don't need this new, amazing revelation. Right? We, we have the word. We have everything we could ever need. So, John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 is the verses he was referencing. He said, then Jesus said to those Jews which believed, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Now, I believe some of these things that you already know, if you'll continue to know them, if you'll continue to meditate them, think about them, literally mutter them when no one's around, mutter them when you're driving, mutter them when you're getting ready in the morning. I truly believe that they will begin to erupt with power on the inside of you. So he even said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. That is experientially. That's not just, oh, it sounds good on paper. No, you should experience it in your life. This was super eye-opening for me. There are things, and I don't know that we'll have time to get into them. Hopefully we don't. But there's things in my life that used to just come so easy. Uh, and, and it was like the Spirit of God began to show me that it was like there was a time when I was super, super humble, and that's why God's grace was so strong in my life. But over time, it's almost like I began to forget that it's only because of His grace that I was good at that in the first place. And so it was like I began to be subtly... <laughs> lifted up in pride. And all of a sudden I found myself having like a challenging time, something that would have been just like easy, jot it down, make the list, get the price by done. Something that would have been so easy in the past. It was like, I'm like confused and I'm like, I'm struggling here. And it was like, if you've been around the Christian worlds, people will say, it's like the grace has lifted. Okay. Well, God said he would never leave us nor forsake us, but he also said he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So maybe it's not that he has pulled or drawn away from me. Maybe it's that my humility is long gone and pride has crept in. And now all of a sudden, where's that grace? Where's that ease that, that, that used to be there? It's like, I'm on my knees. Like, God, show, what is going on? Show me. And so this light came and just this, this revelation. And that's what I love about the word. It's so alive. It's not just a book like you read it. No, no, it's alive. And all of a sudden, it can come alive on the inside of you. So I've got four in you realities for us tonight. They're fairly sobering, uh, you know, so buckle in, put the five-way harness on. It's, it's like, this is, this, is, this is pretty sobering stuff, but it's so powerful and it's so helpful for our life. We talk about in Christ realities. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, right? We know these in Christ realities. It's so important that we know them. We should literally be more aware of our in Christ realities than any other thing because any other thing doesn't, doesn't necessarily carry the weight that in Christ realities carry. But here's the thing. These in you realities are relevant from this standpoint. Let's just take a look. We'll just go straight scripture. We're going New Testament on this. Number one, in yourself, you are are nothing. Okay. And people are like, Oh, I'm the righteousness of God. You're the righteousness of God in Christ. Don't leave that part out. And so Galatians six, three says, for if a man think himself to be something when he is actually nothing, he deceives himself. Sometimes we trick ourselves. There's no deception. The worst kind of deception is self deception. We trick ourselves into thinking we're something when we're actually nothing. And, and again, we're going we're gonna to go through these scriptures. We've got just a few moments left. Uh, and I really want you to see the context of this. So pride, it's, it's deception. It's believing lies about yourself. Uh, it's, it's just not truth. And so Romans chapter 12, verse 3, I want to say this for context. It says, For I say through the grace given to me that every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And, I, and if you have it in the Passion Translation, it's, it's so good. Romans 12, 3, it says, God has given me grace 
to speak a warning about pride. And this is, this is literally where we're going with this, but this verse is so great. It says, I would ask each of you to be emptied of self-promotion and not create a false image of your importance. Instead, honestly assess your worth by using your God-given faith as the standard of measurement, and then you will see your true value. So to not think of ourselves more highly than we ought, it doesn't mean we walk around like, I'm nothing, I'm a worm, the Bible says it, Pastor Greg told, you know, it's not that we have this, we walk around with this mentality, we're garbage. We don't walk around depressed. It's that we understand without God in my life, I am literally nothing. But I have God, so I'm not nothing. Do you understand? It's the context of without God, that's it. Okay, and so we're just, we're looking at these truths. Number two, in yourself, you know nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. So in and of ourselves, without God, we don't know anything. Now, have people built things and built businesses? Yes, they have. Are they worth anything? No. You, know, you understand the context. It says, uh, and so number three, in yourself, you have nothing. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. This, the King James is a little challenging on this for who maketh thee to differ from another and what hast thou that thou didst not receive what do you have that you didn't receive I should have done New King James and then it says now if if thou didst receive it or if you received it why do you glory as though you didn't receive it why are you acting like it's it's something good about you why are you acting like it's it's your accomplishment you produce this you know we see this in evolution you know, they don't want to admit God created them, that, that, that literally God is their creator. They want to say, I, you know, I army crawled out of the slime, out of the goo, and I, and I grew a tail, and I climbed a tree, right? And then I lost my tail, and I jumped down, and I was a man, and I hunted, and I gathered, and I warred, and here I am. You understand? It's, it's just laced with pride. I don't, what, what do I need for God? I, I, I'm my own man. I, I survived. I made it through. It's demonic. It's straight out of the pit of hell. And so when we see these truths, number three, you yourself, you have nothing. It's, we don't have anything, any graces, abilities. When, uh, when, when I worked in business here in the city, when I first moved here, I was in sales. We had certain sales practices that were challenging uh, and, and, and just, it, it was just tough. They, you tell people ACV on their car and they get offended. That's the way it works. And I thought, this is bogus. And so I went for an interview with somebody here in town uh, and they just happened to be best friends with my current boss. So they called my current boss, said, hey, Greg was here looking for a job. So my boss called me, said, hey, we know this isn't for you. We've got this other spot for you in IT. I'm like, what is IT? I don't even know what IT is. <laughs> Information technology. It was amazing. It was a perfect fit. I was graced by God. I worked there for years before I was able, ever able to be on staff here at the church. And literally there was this grace on my life. I have no idea why they trusted me with everything they trusted me with. And, and we bought like a, like just, just, we bought like a Cisco phone system and all these things that I had no idea how to do, but for whatever reason they trusted me and the grace was there to do it. And so uh, I said all that to say, you know, there's been things now like in technology, it's like, God, this used to be like easy, easy. It's not that God has retracted his grace from me because there are graces for our places. If, if it needs to be done, the grace is there. But, but could I have stepped over into pride? Like, yeah, I, you, need, you need to know about computers. You need to know about networking. You need to know about security. I got you. Do you understand? It's that quick where you think, you know, and all of a sudden God's like, okay, you got this. Okay. Good luck. Oh, no, no, no. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Right. That's the way it is. It's so subtle. It can be something that simple. So we're just understanding, listen, without God, we're, we're, we're toast. We are done. You understand? But we're not without God. So we understand the context. Uh, number four, in yourself, you can do nothing. John 15, five he said, I am the vine. You are the branches. And then he says, he that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Everybody say much fruit. For without me, you can do what? Some things you, you can do a lot. And then if it gets difficult, then call in the big guns, <laughs> you know, God, I, I got this. And if it gets, if it gets crazy, I'll call you in. No, without God, we can literally, have you ever seen a branch that says this, this location stinks. 
I'm out of here. You know, nobody ever comes by and sees how beautiful my apples are, you know, and just jumps off and just lays there. Do you think that that branch would ever another day in its life produce an apple? No, you can't detach from the vine and expect to have fruit in your life. So we're, we're just understanding the context of without God, we're nothing. Now we're not without God. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. But when we, when we know this, we are nothing. We, we know nothing. We have nothing. We can do nothing in and of ourselves. It really keeps us grounded. See, because humility is the starting point. It's the foundation. Without that, you can't, you can't build the building without having built the foundation. I mean, you might be able to, but you might get halfway done and it sinks, or you might get all the way done and then it sinks, or, you know, whatever, it's not going to work. It's not going to work in the long run. So we're building this foundation of humility in our life. Why? So that we can live a life of honor, so that we can honor God with our finances, with our life. I mean, people look at our life and they're just like, man, I want my life to be like your life. Oh, let me tell you, God is a good God. Oh, you don't even have to work and labor and toil. Jesus already did it all. All you have to do is learn how to operate in God's kingdom principles and everything will just begin to click. God's blessing will be on your life because of Jesus. It's just amazing. And that's the way God wants it to be. Well, let's talk about pride real quick. <laughs> oh, pride. Oh, pride. Proverbs chapter six, verse 16 and 17. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Number one, anybody know what it is? A proud look, right? Pride does not go over good with God. You know, if you've got kids and, and, they, and they bow up to you, that doesn't usually go over good, right? I know kids that have ah, gotten popped because they try to bow up. You know what I'm saying? Not don't pop your kids. Listen, that's not good. But the thing is, that just, oh, don't bow up to me. It, it's, this, it's this demonic, rebellious spirit. So you, you're not the boss of me. Oh, I'll show you. I'm, I'll show you biblically. I'm the boss of you. Okay. A proud look. This is a country where we're proud to be an American. You understand? Pride is not a bad word in America. Listen, we've all been guilty of this. I'm so proud of you. I would tell my nieces, oh, you did such a good job. I'm so proud of you. Right? And so we have to look at the word. And I just don't remember God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm so proud. Right. And so it's, it's like when, when we're, it sounds weird to be like, oh, you did such a good job at your soccer game. I'm so pleased with you, you know, because God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But the point is in America, pride is not a problem that people will say, well, we're poor, but we're proud. <laughs> it's like, oh, God can deliver you from both poverty <laughs> and pride, <laughs> you know, and, and pride is just not a bad word in America. It's just not. But when we see it in the Bible, we realize how detestable it is to our father, God. So in, in that verse, Matthew chapter three, verse 17, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So uh, God was not proud of Jesus. He was pleased with his obedience. He was pleased with his life, with his conduct, his character, all those things. Proverbs eight thirteen: the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. The street version, Pastor Dean's street version, it looks like this. Available in the bookstore. Nice little plug there. You're welcome, Danae. Um, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13 in the street version. If you really want to honor and respect God, you should hate the evil things that once held you captive. I hate the, I hate the evil things that once held me captive. Now, just because I hate them today doesn't mean that I don't have to hate them again tomorrow. You understand? God hates big-headed pride and filthy, ungodly talk. Proverbs 21.4, just jot it down if you're taking notes. A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The street version of Proverbs 21.4 says, Everything proud and arrogant people do is worthless in the eyes of God, no matter what it means in the natural. That's what I was referring to even earlier, people have built businesses without God. They've, they've done things. They've made accomplishments. They've made museums. They've made, you know, golly, there's so many things that men have made. But according to the street version, uh, those things literally mean nothing to God. I love that. Proverbs chapter 11, verse two, when pride cometh, then cometh shame. Uh, but with the lowly is wisdom. Pastor Dean said in the street version, Proverbs 11, 2, anyone who lives a prideful life will eventually come to shame. 
Proverbs 15, 25. The Lord will destroy the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The street version in 25 and 20, 24 and 25 says, those who walk in the mind of God will continue to live a higher and higher quality of life and miss the destruction. Anybody interested in missing destruction? Whew, man. Oh, I made some dumb mistakes, man. I, I, I could go on for a long time on all the destruction. I'm, I'm ready to miss all that. Man, I've made silly financial mistakes. You know where they trick you into, into uh, when I was in college, they tricked me into buying something. I don't remember what it was. And I called my dad and I was like, dad, what do I do? He's like, send it back. <laughs> you know? It's just like dumb. I don't, I don't even remember if I got my money back, but I just, I'm done with all of these destructive things. I'm just done with it. Because Jesus paid such a high price, they don't have to be a part of our life. So, uh, again, that has to do, missing destruction has to do, is reserved for those who refuse. Uh, we, we don't refuse his counsel so that we can miss destruction. The lives, the homes, the businesses of the proud will never come to a point of real success and will usually fail. But God will always protect the under, underdog, the, the humble one who says, God, I, I need you. I need everything. We don't need God in the sense that we're trying to get him. We need him in the sense that we have to submit to him and say, God, you're God and I'm not. Do I take this job? Do I not take it? See, so many times we're led by opportunity instead of the still small voice. We're led by opportunity. Oh, this is a no brainer. God wants me to prosper. I'm going to prosper. Well, what happens when that business shuts down? Do you understand it? And these are sobering realities. They made a decision not at the unction or direction of the spirit of God. They made a decision based on dollar bills, right? And so we don't have to fall into these pitfalls. Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The street version says the end of a prideful attitude will always be destruction and one who has the big head will soon fall. You are always better off walking in humility uh, with those less fortunate than hanging around the proud and their abundance. Now listen, there's nothing wrong with abundance. It doesn't mean that you always have to hang out, find poor people and hang out with them. It means that I want to spend time with people who have a healthy understanding of God's will concerning resources, that they're not making those things and possessions, they're not making that the main thing in their life. They're seeking first the kingdom and God will actually add those things to us. That's what's so amazing about his way. You don't have to work and labor and toil for them. Now we have to be diligent. We know that, but the point is we're not just oh, we're not just grinding it out. You know, we're not just grinding it out, trying to trying to get there, trying to get to the next step. No, there's an ease about our life where we're pursuing His things. His things are important to us. His things are what matter to us. And all of a sudden, we we see, wow, how, where where did this? My life is filling up with all the things I used to seek after. Now all of a sudden they're just, I don't know where they're coming from. That's God's design. We see it all over in the Word of God. Let's take a look at this two-minute video. And in Florida, neighbors have evacuated from the site of a massive sinkhole. It opened up this morning and rapidly expanded to more than 200 feet, swallowing up a pair of homes. And now several other houses are also threatened nearby. We get more from NBC's Kerry Sanders. Early this morning, neighbors just outside of Tampa, Florida, startled by a sharp, crackling sound. The earth had opened beneath them, a dangerous sinkhole quickly growing. There's a sinkhole right next to our neighbor's house, and it's literally eating the house, like, completely. Yeah, look at that. The Jose Rodriguez and his family at first didn't understand what was happening, but then scrambled to safety as the walls in their homes cracked and the floors buckled under their feet. The first time I didn't know what to do, actually. I just saw the house. It was bouncing, cracking, uh, falling apart. The sinkhole is now 225 feet in diameter, approximately 50 feet deep and growing as residents in nearby homes evacuate. Unfortunately, I don't think people in this community are going to sleep peacefully for a couple weeks. This part of Florida is known as Sinkhole Alley. In 2013, just an hour away, another massive sinkhole swallowed a man after it opened beneath his bedroom. His body was never found. Florida's sandy soil sits on top of a layer of clay and a layer of limestone. Circulating water from too much rain or drought can dissolve the underground layers, causing the earth to give way. And when that happens, usually without warning, everything, including homes, go down as the earth collapses. 
tonight with two homes already gone and nine homes evacuated because they're in the path of this growing sinkhole. The question is, when will it stabilize and stop growing? And the experts here say making that call could take weeks. Lester? What an awful scene there. Kerry Sanders, thank you. Did y'all even know that's like a thing? I mean, I just, I, I, by the Spirit of God, he, he, was, he was likening pride unto a sinkhole. You know, because even those homes, those homes were built on a foundation, right? And, and even um, the, the, the little girl, you could roll the, the one minute clip, Laura, as we go here. The little girl, she's videoing uh, this house as it's going down. Uh, she, you saw her right there, like that was her dad's shot of her videoing it. And, and it's just amazing because as the water begins to form, which I, I, I don't know that I've ever seen it like this, the water begins to swirl and all the landscaping begins to disappear. Did you guys notice that? Like, like, uh, and we'll just give it a few moments here. But, but, and, and I just think about the weight of this house. Look at cinder block. That sucker's got some weight to it. And it's like if if honor is weighty, then we better have a really good foundation underneath our honor. And so, if if we know that before we can get to honor, we've got to have humility. Then then this house was built on, on a foundation, and if humility is the foundation, then. Could it be possible that if we have pride in our life, it's like a sinkhole circling, doing whatever the NBC Nightly News said, it's eroding away. Could be from a drought, could be from a rain. Well, how do you know when your house is going to sink on Sinkhole Alley if it's from a drought or from a rain? I mean, that's pretty good odds. But the point is, I believe the enemy has tried to use pride to create this, to undermine our humility where we don't have this understanding of we are nothing, we have nothing, we can do nothing apart from God. And from that place, we say, God, I, am, I will never let go of you. I will never let go of your word because I am nothing without you. And when that becomes real to us, that's when, you know, and I don't know in the, in the natural, I don't think they can fix a sinkhole. Now that business in town, they're jacking it up or doing whatever they're doing. They're fortifying the foundation. Maybe they're just gonna fortify it and they're going to cock the cracks and paint the cracks and then it will stop sinking. I don't know. But for those people, I, I don't know that there's a solution for them. But when we think about pride and we liken it unto a sinkhole, there's some things we can do about pride. We can choose to lower ourselves. We can choose to humble ourselves. Maybe you're facing a, a big, big financial challenge in your life. Maybe it's bankruptcy. Maybe it's debt. Maybe it's... Uh, uh, being sued, whatever it is, could it be that if we would just humble ourselves and say, God, I, I am in covenant with you through my tithe. That's important. We have to understand the tithe is 10% tithe is 10 of all of your increase. It's found in Malachi chapter three. Look it up, Google it. Find out what God says about the tithe. Find out about all the promises that are associated with the tithe. I'm gonna read Proverbs chapter 15 from the street version real quick and then we'll close. Proverbs 15, 32 and 33, a person who hates to receive instruction. A person who hates, see, when we open the word, we get instruction, right? And when we see things, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that with my finances. You know what I mean? Like that's what our flesh wants to fight it. Our flesh wants to fight it. A person who hates to receive instruction is undermining, undermining, what does that sound like? It sounds like a sinkhole to me. A person who hates to receive instruction is undermining his own mind, will, and, his, and emotions. Do, does anybody know what your mind, will, and emotions are? Your soul. So you're, you're creating a sinkhole in your soul. And then it goes on to say, this is the street version, those who receive correction will grow in understanding and in the mind of God. The first step to understanding the mind of God is respecting what he has to offer. And before he honors his children, they must forsake pride and embrace humility. This is the answer. It's right here in the street version. If we will forsake pride, see, see let me help you. Let me help you. I'm trying not to shine this anybody's eyes here. Let me see. Okay, low, flash, high. Okay, can, Uncle Jim, can you see what that says? Hey, there's our buddy from El Paso. Pride. Did anybody see that when they came in? Did, nobody saw it? That's strange. What about over here? Let me see if I can not get you. What does that one say? Pride. Did, did anybody see that one when you came in? What about, let me go this way, up over. What about right there on that pole? What's that say? 
pride? Could it be that pride is all around us in our life and we don't even see it? Could it be that it's lurking? See, go to the picture, Laura, go to the picture of either five or six. Doesn't matter. Go to five if you can. Go to five. Could it be that pride is there, but everything looks good on the surface. Now, this is a picture from 2013. I believe the sinkhole happened in 2017, but that four-door blazer is the exact blazer that was in the videos. The landscaping looks about the same. The maturity of those beautiful trees looks about the same. This is the house, right? This is the house. Everything looks good. And, and all things being equal, this is how that house looked right before it sank. Go to picture three, Laura. Look where this girl is standing. Look where she's standing, taking a picture. See, sometimes we're like, oh, they're going down. <laughs> they're going down. We're watching everybody else go down. And we're thinking we're safe. But go to picture seven. That's where she was standing. Do you think that she was safe? It was only a matter of moments before. I mean, I don't know how they worked, but I know the one guy died while he was sleeping. You understand? She's right there. I think sometimes we're like, oh, this is, Pastor Greg's really getting somebody tonight. He's getting them good. And we're, we're thinking about other people so that we don't have to think about ourselves. I'm guilty of this. I mean, if there's even things that's like, I'll do anything. I'll do the worst job ever. I just don't want to do that. And it's like, that is the thing that's supposed to be done. That's the thing that's the most important. It's so weird about our flesh, about our carnal nature. It's like, why wouldn't you just do the easier thing? It's like, I, I don't know. I've made up my mind. I don't want to do that. Do you understand? And so we get this way in our flesh. It's just the nature. Uh, Pastor talked about it in the, in the past lessons. Go back and listen to him. He talked about how we inherited this pride from Adam and Eve when they did what they did. Now we have to fight it every day. That's what he said. We've got to fight this every day. And I want to just put up slide nine if you can, Laura. This is something we have to see pride as a sinkhole to our life to our soul, to our finances, to our family, to our marriage, every single aspect of our life. If we'll say, you know what? Pride is a sinkhole. <laughs> Not good. Okay, look at that. And they evacuated every, everybody. They evacu and so it's like, who wants to go back to their house if their house didn't sink? You know what I'm saying? Not me. I'm out. <laughs> okay, burn it down. I don't care. You know, I'm out. Not me. But the thing is, if we'll see pride as a sinkhole to our life, See, it could be all around. It could be, uh, it could be just under the surface. It could be only, a, a, you know, we know from the word pride comes before the fall. That's what we say, pride comes before the fall. But do we look for pride in our life? Do we look for areas? See, and it wasn't until I shine the light that you could see. Now, I wanted to do an ultraviolet painting where we turn on these ultraviolet lights and it just says pride everywhere. But I was like, that's... I was like, Heather could do it with Amazon's help, <laughs> but, but I don't know if it would stain the walls. <laughs> so I was like, what about if I just print, print the pride? See, nobody could see it until, see, God wants to shine the light, say, over here. And he's not condescending. He, he's trying to help. He's saying, hey, you got a sinkhole here. See, I, I'm not okay with, oh, I fixed that sinkhole. I'm not okay with the front half of my house being okay and the back half falling into the water or whatever that is. See, I want them all gone. And so I'm going to get in the word and I'm going to say, God, pastor, ooh, pastor, I, I felt like he was getting on my nerves today, Father. What was that? That was pride. You understand? I felt like he was preaching at me and I felt like, you know, why does he have to keep saying escalates? I like my escalates. See, he wants you to think about the escalate as if that's the problem. God has no problem with escalates. And you know that if you, really, if you really stop and think about it, you know, okay, he's not talking about an escalate, but the enemy could use that one thing to literally offend you and be like, oh, well, he's got a towel on me. That's pretty close. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the enemy, he's that dirty. He's that dirty. And so if we say, no, 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 that's a sinkhole. No, no. That, see, because sinkholes don't, your sinkholes don't affect, you know, your, well, I guess it can affect your neighbors, but, but the, primarily they're coming after you. That's what the enemy, he's coming after you. And he wants you to be like video on your neighbors like, oh, their marriage fell apart. Okay, little girl, you're standing on a sinkhole. Okay, get back. And I don't understand them. I would have been like closer. I'd been like, oh, look down there. Look, you can see bubbles. I mean, just <laughs> dumb, dumb stuff. You know what I mean? Something uh, somehow along the way, the, the fear of danger didn't click. I think it was my big brother's fault because he was crazy and, and did all these crazy things. But 
The point tonight is God wants to show you areas of pride in your life. And it's not like, yay, but it is like, yay. It is exciting when we see it in the context and we think about it in that way. We're like, this is, this is good. So when you get in the word and you read the PFS and, and it kind of steps on your toes, like, oh, thank God, we're filling in the sinkhole. Let's fill that sucker in. Do you understand?